Top 10 Awkward Moments on 90 Day Fiancé. There's no denying that TLC has all the best shows. There's My Strange Addiction, My 600 Pound Life, Extreme Cheapskates, and everyone's latest obsession, 90 Day Fiancé. Before we go on with the video, are you interested in winning any of these items on the screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like, and comment the hidden message. Debuting January 12th, 2014. 90 Day Fiancé is an American documentary slash reality TV series that has been going on for seven seasons and has also given life to seven spin-off shows, such as Happily Ever After or Before the 90 Days. The K-1 visa process is what lays down the foundations for the show, as it follows couples along their journey throughout the process. The K-1 process involves a foreigner to the United States being allowed to live within the U.S. with their fiancé for 90 days before they must be married. This is a difficult journey for couples to go on. They may face judgment and other exterior troubles, as well as tensions within their own relationship. And naturally, many awkward moments pop up throughout the show as we get an insight into the lives of the participants. But at the end of the day, those cringeworthy bits of screen time are why we watch this stuff, right? Here are our top 10 awkward moments on 90 Day Fiance. Darcy gets drunk. You seem so off. Take a seat, love. I am. What you've got to love about reality TV is that it can be so relatable sometimes. While it's true that most of us have not taken part in the K-1 visa process, we've all been through stressful times, and a large amount of us will probably have to admit to having too much to drink on the odd occasion. Naturally, contestants Darcy and Jesse's romantic date at home turned slightly sour when Jesse lost his patience with a drunken Darcy. What is with your attitude? Come Wait. on. You're not my boss, you can't tell me what to do. It would appear that the pressure of having 90 days to figure out if your relationship works became a bit too much for Darcy to handle, as she appeared noticeably drunk at the table, having obviously polished off a decent amount of wine. Jesse wasn't too happy after his attempts to begin a conversation were shut down by a strange high five offer thrown in from his date, and it only got worse from there. What followed was an extremely passive aggressive exchange with Jesse eventually losing his cool, saying, we can create some drama right now. I know you like it. So, sure, Darcy maybe should have thought more carefully about getting so drunk before their date, but it's clear that this couple's problems were a little deeper than a glass of wine. Lauren shares her views on the other couples. For me, it's embarrassing being associated with them. It's an embarrassment and it's really discouraging because we're happily married and in love. Contestant Lauren scribbled her name into the show's history books with a now famous outburst in which she gave her very honest opinions on the other couples to their faces. Viewers cringed as she laid into her fellow cast members in a tell-all special. And despite the fact that they were all sat in very comfortable looking chairs, it's fair to say that everyone on set was anything but relaxed. She addressed her issues with how she felt the other couples were being frauds. Everybody else sees it, Muhammad. You are a fraud. It doesn't so matter. Enough. Referring to the others, she explained, For me, it's embarrassing being associated with them, amid her claims that the other couples were representing everything bad about the K-1 process, was accusing them of being fake and not deserving of the visa. Her remarks soon escalated into a shouting match with other participant, Muhammad. Really? I don't yes. see you two still happily together. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what you see. This was also a controversial moment for the show as it raised the question of whether or not the K-1 process really works. There are many people who will take advantage of such systems in order to simply secure visas, and most cringeworthy of all for viewers is the fact that she is questioning how genuine these couples are and calling them a fraud, literally to their faces. That's always going to lead to some awkward viewing. Pedro's Awkward Introductions Oh, Gigi, what was that? Where, where did the VN? VN, VN. The nature of these relationships is that they are usually a fast-moving one mainly because they have to be, and quickly moving in with someone from another country can pose a large amount of problems. Participant Pedro was met with a few of these problems when sitting down to meet his fiancée Chantel's friends for the first time. Poor Pedro struggled mainly with the language barrier, but you could argue that it would have been a more peaceful experience for the guy if he had not understood anything that the girls were saying. The conversation soon turned into an interrogation about Pedro's intentions and the speed at which everything was all moving. One of the friends stated that it seemed so rushed before being called out by a different friend for making the situation awkward. Maybe the little argument between the girls gave Pedro a brief escape from the interrogation, but him and Chantel still remained in the middle of it all. He was probably more worried about whether or not he was going to remember Chantel's friends' names before arriving to the gathering. He probably didn't expect all of this. Mark's Weird Timing 
I had bought the same car for my ex-wife. It was for her to get around, though, because she liked the car. Cast member Mark's young bride-to-be, Nikki, had her frown turned very much upside down when the older man ruined what might have been a beautiful moment, both for the couple and for viewers of the show. Attempting to ease her into her new life, Mark bought Nikki a brand new car. Kind of sweet, right? Well, sweet things tend to turn sour in a relationship when you continue to mention your ex-wife. I had bought the same car for my ex-wife. Mark actually had a recurring problem of mentioning his ex-wife to Nikki, and even this time was no exception. We were barely able to see a reaction before Mark went on to explain how he had bought the exact same make and model for his ex. And viewers at home gritted their teeth at the awkwardness of it all, as Nikki's face immediately screwed up into a look of pure resentment. It probably isn't fair for Mark to blame his poor choice of words on the pressure of the 90-day process. People with timing that bad are probably just useless in most relationships. Paul uses Google Translate. Estado? Estadia. Im, um, hotel. If you intend on meeting your fiancé's family, then you should plan ahead, especially if they do not speak English as a first language. When Paul finally gets to meet the parents, he decides to use Google Translate to communicate with them. Estado? Estadia. Im, um, hotel. And the results are so awkward that it is almost unbearable to watch. When using Google Translate, it mistakenly asks for permission to take her to a hotel for the night. The parents are not pleased, and the couple have to try and salvage the situation through some quick translating in order to prevent any further embarrassment. Paul tries to awkwardly laugh it off, but the damage is clearly done. Hotel. Talk about leaving a lasting impression. Paul wears a condom in the river. He said fish gets through the waiter, and I had this little penis, I guess like a sheath protection bag. In probably one of the most viral scenes from the entire series, Paul decided to wear protection to the swimming pool. Paul said that he didn't want anything weird on his penis, even though he had put a condom on while in the river. Paul seems notorious for being unprepared, and his trip to the Amazon only confirmed this. Paul and Serena decide to go to one of the untreated rivers for a swim, but Paul took advice from his travel doctor, who recommended to wear a few protective layers, which included a condom and a sheath inside the condom to totally cover his penis. I guess he won't be peeing in the water, which is a good thing. Paul's questionable swimming attire is complete with his life jacket and pair of overalls. Serena probably felt embarrassed that her floating fiancé looked like a total idiot. On a positive note, at least she knows that Paul takes his health seriously. Nikki wants to sleep in Mark's bed. Mark seems like the standard gentleman, especially when he offered future fiancé Nikki her very own room to sleep in since they were not married yet. Nikki, however, wanted to sleep in Mark's bed instead, and she even goes on to give a description of what intimacy between the two might be like. While the age gap between the couple isn't to everyone's liking, the fact that Nikki had to go on and tell the audience what happens behind closed doors was enough to draw the line. The scene was just so cringy that it would put you off food if you happened to be ballsy enough to eat anything while watching the show. Carolina finds pink underwear. Carolina got the shock of her life when she found a pair of pink underwear in her Colombian boyfriend's closet. When confronted by Carolina, Fernando tried his best to explain, but all he could do was stutter and tell a million excuses. Maybe he could have said he liked to play dress up, or that they were a surprise gift for Carolina, or that they were a family heirloom. There were so many things Fernando could have said, but in the end, Carolina wouldn't have liked the answer anyways. The scene was so incredibly awkward, especially when watching Fernando panic. It almost made the audience feel sorry for the guy. The guy with pink underpants. You would think that if your fiancé was from overseas and planning a marriage, the least that you could do was some light house cleaning before they arrive. Chantel fights with Pedro's family. In one shocking scene, we see Chantel get into a heated argument with Pedro's family. Which is so brutal as well as awkward that you might have to watch it again to make sense of it all. Remember that a huge problem with dating someone from a non-native English-speaking country is of course the language barrier, but you would be fortunate to only have one barrier overall. When Chantel tried to communicate her concerns about Pedro sending too much money home, she was met with an anger of two very angry women. Negotiations then took a turn for the worse and resulted in a screaming match between Chantel and Pedro's sister, both trying to speak over each other. The tension was intense as insults started flying from every angle, both in English and Spanish. Poor Pedro was fortunate that he wasn't present during the argument 
as whose side would you take in such an awkward situation? Pretty much everything with Big Ed. 54 years old, Ed, or Big Ed, as he ironically refers to himself, even though he is 4 foot 11, came across 23-year-old Filipina Rosemarie on Facebook of all places. Rosemarie is 6 years younger than his own daughter, but this is not an issue for Ed, and after 3 months of chatting, exchanging messages, and sending thousands of dollars in gifts, Ed decided to fly to the Philippines to meet the love of his life. From the get-go, the whole episode is just plagued with cringe and awkwardness. From Ed being caught out about lying about his height, to using literal mayonnaise instead of hair products, to even asking Rose to take an STD test, even though he refuses to take one himself. What a gentleman! Rose's facial expressions, however, are the silver lining in the story, especially when words clearly fail her. Whether it's her inability to hide how disgusted she is, or her ability to show utter shock at anything that comes out of Big Ed's mouth, Rose is definitely someone who we are truly rooting for. One of the most fondest moments between the couple was when Ed gave Rose the ultimatum to shave her legs because he finds it gross, or to kiss him. Oh jeez, tough choice Rose. Another iconic moment is when Ed asks Rose to open a robe so that he can massage her feet, which then led to Ed begging for a kiss, to which she reluctantly obliges. So there is our list. Which do you think was the most awkward? Do you think we missed anything in the video? Please, don't forget to give us a like, share, and click on the subscribe notification for more videos.